In this module, we're now going to focus on a multiple Azure services deployment. We focused primarily on virtual machines for a while and the different ways of deploying them in modules. But what if we want to go ahead and add like an Azure SQL service to the stack? And that's really what, what's in this module. One demo where we're going to deploy an Azure VM, the same VM stack that we've had before, but now we're going to add a database stack to it as well. To begin this demonstration, let's just take a quick refresher at where you get the different code for Terraform for the different providers. So let's head over to the Terraform website. Okay, on the Terraform website, if we select Docs at the top, select Providers, choose Azure, and scroll down again, we can see on the left-hand side here all our different data sources options, so things like data lake store, storage, etc. will be there. If we scroll further down and we look for SQL, we've got App Services, Active Directory, Compute Resources, Container Resources, and then you will see Database Resources. So in our case, we want to you know, add to our virtual machine. Maybe the virtual machine is a web server we're deploying, and we want a database you know, service as well. But we don't want to deploy that database on a virtual machine. We actually want to use the Azure PaaS services. And what we can do, you can see yeah, there's options for Azure SQL Database. And again, they've got the code for that there. If we go back, you've also got SQL Server options there as well uh, that you can basically deploy. In my case, I'm going to cheat a little bit. We've got the code already here, which again, you can download from GitHub. So we'll open that up and you can see the DB code here. We'll copy this and paste it into a new file in Visual Studio Code. So we've got a new blank folder here. We'll create this new one. We'll call this dbcode.tf. Paste that in there. And before we can do anything, we also need to paste in the rest of those files. We still want to deploy our virtual machine and we need those authentication variables as well. So what we'll do is take the code from module six. If you remember this code, this was where we deployed the resource group, the virtual machine with the prefix, etc. So we'll take the main.tf file, the tfvars file, and the variables file. We'll copy those, go back over to module eight, and paste those in, and then go back over to Visual Studio Code. Okay, back in Visual Studio, what we can see now is we have our main Terraform file, same as we did before. We've got our variables, and you can see our DB code file. Notice we've put that in a separate Terraform file, so I don't have to necessarily take all of that and put in the same file. They get very big. You can have multiple .tf files in the folder. As long as they're in the same folder, it will read them. Again, if you put them in subfolders, then we have to call them like modules like we did in the previous lecture. But if we go to the DB code, let's just walk through some of this quickly so you can understand it. So one, we're going to be deploying the resource Azure RM underscore SQL underscore server. It's got a name. It's going to go in that resource group that we've used before in the same location. We've got the version number and we have to provide an administrator login and password. Same thing, you might want to refer to Key Vault or something else in the future. Then we've got our network rule. We've actually added here is a VNet rule that allows us to basically, you know, not only just create our, our VM in the subnet, but we've also utilized, if we scroll down, a virtual service endpoint as well. So you can see the service endpoint here under DB subnet, uh, Microsoft SQL. And this is essentially saying, because one of the security features in Azure is to restrict the PaaS service directly to the specific VNet that we wanted to apply to. And so that's what the combination of these, these two things do. We obviously create in the DB subnet, we're creating that service endpoint there, and we've got that SQL VNet rule applied as well. And so that's the entire section of code that we need. And now we're going to be able to deploy that VM and the PaaS SQL service at the same time. So let's go ahead and try this out in PowerShell. And first thing we need to do is initialize. So we'll go to our folder and do a Terraform init. And it's going to go ahead and get the plugins that it needs. And again, it's just the Azure RM plugin it needs still because it's all from the same provider. And if we do a Terraform plan, what we will see is that it's going to add eight Terraform resources. If we scroll up past the virtual machine information, we will see that it is also creating the SQL Server in that resource group. The only thing we'll just quickly change is the name. So it's eight. So if we go to our main.tf file, change that to Skylines demo eight, save that, and then we will go ahead and apply. 
and we'll choose yes and that will begin deploying all of that infrastructure again this will take a little bit of time so we will fast forward here until things have completed okay and as you can see after some time that's all completed and we've got our SQL server there now as well, our virtual network, our interface, our virtual machine, and the disk that obviously goes with the virtual machine itself. Still got my tag showing that I'm the owner. And you can see how you can just continuously build upon this configuration. You don't have to keep expanding out that main.tf file. You can add additional TF files with that additional infrastructure as code deployed in them. The final thing we'll just show very quickly, we'll head over to our PowerShell client. And we'll just do one other thing. We'll do a Terraform graph, which is the last command we'll show you before we end off this course. And that really shows you all of the resources and the mapping between them. So if we had to have sort of sub-resources that have dependencies, it will show you those as well. But this is a great command if you just want to kind of get a look at, you know, everything that's out there, all the resources that are essentially deployed as well. So a good one there. Uh, and with that, just to end off, remember to go ahead and destroy everything when you are done. Terraform Destroy is your friend. Just be careful with it. Hit yes, and all of that will be destroyed because certainly I don't want to be billed for all of that. And with that, this concludes this demonstration.